Hey guys, Elizabeth, the curly haired country gal here. Whoa, let's hold it right there. How about we see how I normally introduce videos? Hey guys, I'm Elizabeth, the curly haired country gal. Hey guys, I'm Elizabeth, the curly haired. Hey guys, I'm Elizabeth, the curly haired country gal. So yes, on uh, April 11th, when I recorded this, as you probably guessed, I was sick. And ironically enough, I'm sick today as well. <laughs> well, let's see what else I have to say. Today I'm going to be making a breeding pen to go along with my spiral breeding method. This is part two of working toward a self-sustainable flock. Part one was getting our chickens healthy, which is still a work in progress, but you can check out that video up above or I'll put it in the description. We have the coop and the run, and we have the orchard, which is surrounded by a premier one fence, but I need a third enclosure. So in this video I'm going to be constructing a pen for my third enclosure to do the spiral breeding method, which again you can check out the video for above or I'll put it in the description. So my goal for this enclosure was to make it sturdy, mobile, and very low cost. I'm really glad I made it and I learned a lot of things as always. So now four months later I'm going to walk you through what's working and what I wish I would have done differently. So I'm gonna attempt to do this with only PVC. I've seen a few other videos of people making hoop coops with just PVC, and some people use really big PVC, like three inch PVC. So I'm gonna try and do it with half inch PVC for the hoops and a three quarter inch base. Along with my super duper helper, June Bubba. Huh, I look at her with Dinkin. Good girl, good leave it. You're so sweet. Meanwhile, Dinkins is not amused. She's growling. Okay, so what I did for this first stretch here, which I plan to copy for the other side, is I'll just go ahead and show you my little map here. So this is the outline that I have. So every two feet, there's gonna be a hoop that goes over. So that's what these represent, these T's that I'm putting in here. And those on mine are gonna go at the 90 degree angle. So then, in between where these arrows are, I have two T's that are perpendicular. Uh, yes? Do you want to say something? Oh, okay. Well, oh, I'm just gonna get back to my video. Is that okay? Okay. Anyway, so then the, I have these other ones that are going to be turned at a 90 degree angle from the other ones, and that's gonna give lateral support so that it's not super bowed out like what happened when I first started to make my mini hoop coop over the raised bed. So here's my idea, very simple. They didn't have any T's or corners, PVC corners that went from three quarter inch to half inch with a slip. So I just got a little creative and I got the three quarter inch kind of T elbow on the bottom with this joint and it screws into this half inch slip adapter. So that's what are gonna be the corners. And then spaced out every two feet are gonna be these elbows or these T's. And then I just got two half inch elbows to make a simple door where the PVC will go across and then around. So I'm gonna space out the three quarter inch PVC on the bottom every two feet because this hardware cloth that I'm gonna be putting on the top is two feet long. So that'll go nicely over each edge. So I'm gonna start marking and cutting the PVC for the base. So I'm actually gonna cut this again and the rest of this PVC, I'm gonna be cutting at 22 and a half inches instead of 24 inches. So we lose an inch and a half on the ends and this will and that'll allow for the welded wire to be secured right to the PVC that goes around the hoop and not have a gap. Oh and Dinkins is gonna come join me too. Hello Miss Dinkins. Good girl. Okay so I now have both sides completed and I just need to determine how wide it can be to make the hoops give a lot of room for the chickens. Did I get the angles perfect? No, but I think it'll work. So after getting things laid out in here, I think I'm gonna go ahead and go with seven and a half feet for the width of the pen. That's what that tape measure is just about at right now. I don't think I should go too much farther out, otherwise I'm gonna be losing space there in the corners. So I think this is, looks like a really nice size, so that'll be about 75 square feet for them. <laughs> oh, 
Okay, so now the frame is done and it's time to put the hoops on. Okay, so so far pretty good. The only snag I ran into was here at this corner where I didn't, I must have not gotten this at a great angle and it, the PVC keeps popping out. Uh, so my husband's helping my son finish his piano lesson and he's gonna help me. So it ran into a couple other problems. Here, getting it out of the garage, the other side popped off as well. So that's, that's good to know now. I'd rather have that happen now than when it's in the orchard. I'm, you know, I wanna be able to move it around. So I found some scrap wood and I secured it to that side and now Jared, my husband's going to help me secure it to this side and then I can cut it to the right length and we'll go ahead and support this side with some wood as well in addition to putting some screws in with that PVC. So what I like about the frame is spacing it out two feet like I did so that that uh, welded wire could go over it really conveniently. I also really loved the simple door design and I loved that I could use half inch and three quarter inch PVC and not have to use two or three inch PVC. Now here's a big thing that I would have done very differently. I chopped all of those pieces of three quarter inch PVC for the base. I chopped them all up and then fitted them back together with the glue. Thinking about it now, I think it would have been a much better idea to just keep those three quarter inch pieces, that three quarter inch, 10 foot long piece of PVC hole and sliding fitted tees over it and screwing them in. Because as things, some of the connections started to pop apart, even though they were glued and I had to reinforce them. So that's what I would do differently is just keep it all together. Now, Lord willing, there will be a follow up to this video with improvements to this hoop coop. But one thing that I would have done differently too, especially with this design, is to go ahead and support it right away with some wood. And then I'm also planning to add wheels because I do want it to be more mobile and it's so heavy now that uh, it's pretty awkward to move. So if you want to see the update for that, make sure you subscribe and hit that notification bell so you'll know when it comes out. So it's day two. I've got some extra helpers today that have been working with me. And we've got the first row of welded wire on, so now it's time for the second one. Now the thing I liked about the chicken wire slash welded wire was making the decision to use chicken wire underneath where there was vinyl siding because there's already a layer of protection there. And to be honest, I don't even know if I needed to use welded wire for uh, the parts that were exposed to predators like raccoons because this hoop coop still is enclosed in the Premier One fence and so far I haven't lost any chickens to land predators but I love how it fit nicely over the beams like I thought it would with those cable ties. And the cable ties are super inexpensive and easy to use, really great for projects, so I really like that part. And really, with this part of the project, I don't think I would have done anything differently. If you're liking this video, can you just like it down below? Thanks!
one thing I love about using this vinyl siding is that it was zero cost. So I love reusing things, not throwing things in the trash that I don't need to. So our house previously had white vinyl siding and the previous owners changed it to green vinyl siding and left the remaining green vinyl siding and the white vinyl siding. And so you'll see this vinyl siding if you look back at my video where I made my own little feed cover for the chickens, which is actually now in the rabbitry. And as a matter of fact, I hope today to use some more of that vinyl siding to make an even more sturdy canopy over the dust baths for the chickens. I also like that this is fairly sturdy and it slips together really nicely. And then the holes, of course, in the top that you're supposed to use nails in make it really easy to use those ties to secure it together. And again, here, I don't think I would have done anything differently. Oh, there we go. <laughs> Now for the door, my, my son and I had a fun time putting this together. The thing I love about it is that it's super simple. We made that frame using the two elbows and two pieces of PVC, and then we just simply covered it with the welded wire and chicken wire. But the thing I would do differently would be to be more precise with the measurements before I covered it with welded wire, because the shape isn't perfect for the hoop coop, and there's a gap, and there's, kind of a, there's just kind of an awkward gap when you close it up because of that, and that's actually because of how the vinyl siding comes onto it. So that's what I would have done differently is made that fit a little bit more flush so that I didn't have to jerry-rig rope threaded through it to make it close all the way so the chickens couldn't get out or things couldn't get in. And last but not least, the rope. What I love about this is that it makes it easier to pull, but what I would definitely do differently would be to find a rope that has less give because this is such a stretchy rope. I, I just wish that I had gotten one that was less elastic. So there you go. I hope you're inspired to look around you, see what things might be considered trash that you can use to build a project for a low cost. Something that's still gonna work just fine for you to accomplish your purposes. And now I'm excited to be just one little step closer to a self-sustainable flock. Thanks so much for joining me.